All right, guys, we are back with the guy we've been talking about. I've been looking forward to this interview for a couple days now. Him and I's path have been somewhat similar, somewhat different for a long time. But my man is racing for his life and his career. Join us right here in studio, Ryan Truex. Not Junior, just Ryan Truex. Thank you. Happy to be here. Happy to have you. I like you your in. podcasting voice, too, by the way. It's it's nice. You got to you gotta flip the switch. Yeah, you're yeah. good at it. Appreciate that. <laughs> Don't blow smoke up my ass. <laughs> first things first, man, I got to acknowledge the flow. The Appreciate flow is it. dialed. It looks good. Yeah. I'm jealous. I kind of miss mine a little bit. I thought you would, and uh, I'm glad to get your opinion on it, and I'm happy you like it. That is an A-plus flow because it's got a little less grays in it than mine. <laughs> It's it, they're coming in. I know they're getting there. They're all stringy. Yeah, it's it's longer than yours was. It is. It's down there. But he's got like he's got some more body to his though. Mine was a little. Dude, more my, yeah, mine's mine's a bit of a bit of a pain to take care of. Have you ever got that you look like me with that flow at the racetrack? Um, I have. Luckily, I'm a foot shorter than you, <laughs> so people <laughs> people see that and they're like, all right, that's definitely not I'm Corey. A, a foot, <laughs> a full foot shorter Almost than almost a foot. So. Oh. Just funny, funny story. I came on here. So your PR guy, Austin, shout out, writes me this eloquently worded thousand page, (laughs) thousand page doctrine on why Ryan Truex should come on the show. Doing a great job. I said, buddy, I just responded, buddy, you could have saved a lot of words if you just asked, hey, can Ryan Truex come on the show? <laughs> and the answer is yes. I've raced with you for a long time. I've respected you. 20, yeah, shout out to Austin. He's, 20, he's been great. 2011, so. 2010, uh, K&N, East yeah. Series champ. 9 and 10. 9 and 10. Man, you were the guy. I also got a message about coming on this podcast oh. from Ryan Truex two weeks ago. Well, he also texted me too. He so. said, one day I'll be a guest and just give you for an hour. Yep. That was what he said. Well, here we go. Here <laughs> so we are. Here, here you are. So we had. We well, went I'm going to give you week. some softballs so you can give some. <laughs> he was supposed to win Martinsville. It. Yeah, I, I did not. I didn't hold up my end of the bargain. It, it didn't okay. play out. It didn't play out. I was pulling for Two, you. Teammates ran good though. So where do you think the 19 missed it this week? I guess driver. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. We uh, yeah, we were good in practice. I felt really good about it. We went out really early in qualifying, and which is a terrible. It's tough, and on top of that, I overdrove it. And that's been my theme in my uh, my two qualifying sessions this year is, is trying a little too hard and uh, would have been better off just backing off a little bit. So that well, part sucked. And it's, I mean, even even in the Xfinity car, it's tough to pass, pass at Martinsville. And, uh, you know, you get back there and you get into the second, third stage, and that's when bumper cars start. And oh, yeah. last year I got used up a lot and I came back this year like, all right, I'm going to be more aggressive. And I was and uh made some mistakes and it didn't really uh didn't really turn into a good finish man so you, you talk about overdriving and qualifying just because you don't get a lot of opportunities to settle in to you know run the car of what you know 98 percent sometimes is better than 102 percent right but when you don't know when the next deal is going to come and you're racing week by week for your life like you are right now you've got three races left you got this week you've got talladega or this uh, week's Talladega. Yeah. This week's Talladega. Next week is Dover. Dover. Home track. Which home track. Home track. Rewind 10 years. <laughs> and you were what? Five laps away? Something like that, yeah. Driving a Gibbs car. Yep. Do you think your career trajectory looks different if you win that race? Probably. Um, if you look back at the Xfinity, Xfinity series back then, there wasn't many guys my age. Um, I think it was like me, Trevor, and, and Ricky, really um in in good equipment then you had a lot of cup guys you know carl was racing every week brad was racing every week i think kurt bush was in that race um clint boyer ran a bunch you had to beat really good drivers joey was in that race he ended up winning it um you had to beat the best to to run up front in the xfinity cars and all the best drivers were in the best equipment so when you got a shot in one of those cars you you know you had to prove yourself and you had to get it done and I was close. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if I would have gone out and, and beat Joey and um, all those other guys, I think, yeah, I'd probably be in a different spot right now. But it's a lot easier, you know, to look back in the past. I'm sure you feel the same way. There's, I can remember every single race and what I did wrong and what I could have done better to finish, you know, a few spots better or, or have a chance at a win. Um, it's just, you know, it's easy to be a, a Monday morning quarterback. It's not often, though, that you get – another shot at it 
a decade later, right? You've been racing a lot, learned a lot of life lessons on and off the racetrack. So what do you apply this time? Maybe not just to Dover, but to your overall career for the next couple of weeks to, I guess, what have you learned in that 10 year span? I've learned that it's a lot harder than I thought it was. Um, you know, coming up through the ranks, it was all pretty easy. How old were you 10 years? How old are you now? 31. Okay. Yeah. I was, I think I was 20, um, just turned 20. So I had a lot different, a lot different outlook on life back then. And you had just won the K&N championship, right? Two of them. <clears throat> two of them. Um, for driving for a wall trip? Driving for a wall trip. And then I ran, you know, 2000, end of 2010, I ran a few races for them. Um, yeah, my first Xfinity race, it was at Gateway, uh, with Greechy, Mike Greechy calling the shots up on the box. Who was my, and that 99 car was so fast. It was my, uh, my K&N crew chief. Um, and we, uh, we were P1 in practice, went out and qualifying, overdrove it. Seems like I have a tendency There's to do that. There's a trend. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, in the race, I think I was on par for like a seventh or eighth place finish, which and your Xfinity debut back then was was a big deal, yeah. and uh, backed it in the fence by myself. Damn it! Yep. Went to uh, Michigan the week after that. Put it on the outside pole behind Brad. Sped on pit road, and uh, those are the types of mistakes that you learn from. And that's the kind of thing I've I've learned from from then to now is is how to minimize those mistakes. And like you said, outlooks everything. And uh, back then, pretty much my life was. Race tra- racing, go to the racetrack. All I cared about was I'm going to be a cup champion one day. I don't care about all this other stuff, you know, personal life, anything like just, you know, I'm all about racing. And, uh, you know, now I definitely have a different outlook on life and, and, uh, it's definitely made me had to, uh, you know, focus on my personal life and, and being in the right headspace and, you know, having the right people around you and, and having good friends and family and, you know, all that stuff that it takes to have a good life outside of whatever your profession is. Um, those were things I didn't think about 10 years ago that I do now. And I feel like that's definitely humbled me and grounded me and uh, made me appreciate it a lot more. How it's gotta be tough, man. Not many people <clears throat> are in the position you are 12 years younger than your brother, Martin. How seeing the success he's had Bush series champion, NASCAR cup series champion. Do you feel, feel like do you find yourself comparing yourself often or no i feel like i compare myself to everybody like you know when you're in a position like me and you have been in over the years bouncing through teams you know good rides bad rides in between um you know taking the blame for things that maybe aren't your fault you know being kind of the the guy that that everybody can point to and say this is the problem in in situations where you're probably not but Mm -hmm. it's easy to It's easy to take the fall for that. Um, and then you look at guys come up and, and win and everything and just have success right away, get in the right spot at the right time. Yeah, The sport's all about timing. If you're not in the right place at the right time, it doesn't matter what you do. Um, you know, you can put your best foot forward and give it your best effort, but it's just, you know, it might not be that team's time to shine. It might not be your time to shine. It's It's just, you know. For some people, everything just seems to work out perfectly. And I've definitely found myself bitter about things over the years and angry and, and you know, why couldn't that have been me? Why, you know, it's really easy to do that. And, you know, especially as you get older and you watch young guys come in, you're like, well, this guy has done this by this age. And here I am four years older. And I still haven't done it. Yeah. yeah it's really easy to feel, you know, pretty shitty about yourself. But everybody's got, that. yeah, everybody's oh, got a different does. path. So he still does deal with that. I know I'll how it is. I feel speak the same for way. You, like looking at K and N stuff, because we were like, I was working for a cup team then, but I was around all you guys when you were running K and N. But having his own team going and beating, you know, everybody that's at the top level now: Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, Bubba, Dan yeah, you Suarez. Were, yeah, you were the same. You I know, mean, you were the same way. Yeah. And then you know they get into the right spot at the right time and. You know, winning championships, winning races, and it's yeah. like, and it's hard to, to it, even that? now. It's hard to talk about it and not seem like we're just bitter about it and complaining. Yeah. Um, but that's the reality of it. Is you know, it, that's that's a hard thing to deal with mentally for sure, and really, really easy to get yourself spun out about. And you know, when you're thinking about things like that, you're not putting your best foot forward on the racetrack. So I've had to really learn, probably over the past three or four years, how to just let that go. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, appreciate that everybody's on their own path. Um, you know, when, when things are going to work out, they're going to work out and you can just, I feel like I have that sliver of hope still in the back of my mind that, you know, one of these days it's going to click. And, you know, once it does, I feel like then it's just like a snowball going down a hill. What's that hope look like? Like when you say hope, is hope a cup ride? Is it a solid Xfinity ride? You know, I've done the, I've done the the cup stuff a little bit. Were um, you guys ever teammates at BK? We weren't. We were we in different back. years. Where yeah. were you? BK? Did you do Swan too? Just, just BK racing. Just BK. Yeah. Yeah, it was an interesting time in my life for sure. You and me both, pal. <laughs> <laughs> buddy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a tough one. Um, but you gotta you gotta have some sort of light at the end of the tunnel of why you keep showing up, right? Why you keep leveraging relationships and finding your way back to try to get something good to hopefully get a not a better shot, but a more stable opportunity yeah, to learn. No, I mean, even coming back to JGR this year part time with Jason Ratcliffe and the same team, same engineer, same guys, just having these two years in a row has been huge for me. And that's something that I've definitely lacked over the years is just consistency, even in being in the same organization and having the same people around me, even though it's, you know, five or six races a year, it's still a huge deal. And, um, yeah, just stability would be, would definitely be nice. Um, but obviously I want to win races. I know, I believe I can, you know, I think you have to show up at the track and know that you're good enough. And if you don't, then you're kind of behind the eight ball before you even show up. So, yeah, I mean, obviously cups, the goal for all of us to be a, you know, driving for a, a Joe Gibbs racing or, or a Hendrick or Penske. Um, that's the dream I think that we all have. Um, but yeah, I mean, just, you know, being in the, at the national level and winning races and being competitive and being there, you know, every week is, is definitely a, a light at the end of the tunnel for me. Now you mentioned Martin, you know, being so much younger than Martin, you didn't start racing. I was 14. You're 14. Yeah. On the legend car track, Wall stadium on the flat track. <laughs> on the flat track. Yeah. The black fifth, car fifth or, the mile or whatever it 56. was. 56. I remember Not when you, fifth, no, it was like a, was it Kevin? Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Kramer. You, Kevin yep. Kramer. He brought you down here. You guys ran the road course. Yep. Some. So he I worked remember. on my dad's modifieds. Yep. My dad's Bush North team. Mm. He worked on my brother's modifieds. Um, and Ronnie Buck would help you and out. Ronnie. Yeah. They, yep. they both, they guys. wall stadium guys. They went through, you know, the Bush North ranks with my dad and my brother when my dad owned his own team. And then, yeah, when I came down here to run late models, um, and Martin owned a late model and we kept it at, uh, DEI's Bush East shop in the corner somewhere. I lived, um, with my cousin Curtis in one of Dale's apartments and, uh, you were young then too, right? 16, 16, 16. Yeah. So, so I just go back from and 14 to like being down here in a matter of two years pretty quickly. Yep. And that wasn't, you didn't run go-karts or I didn't race. I didn't, I didn't really have an interest in it until, um, my brother's, it was his motorhome driver in 2000. Tuna? Is that what five, they called No, oh. uh, Ray Irwin. Okay. 2005. And, um, I, I went to the uh, track somewhere and after that was Indy. So we rode in the motorhome. I stayed and rode with him to Indy and he's like, we're going to stop at the go-kart track and I want to, I want to see you drive one and see if you're any good. I was like, all right, <laughs> like real go-karts, like yeah. helmet and all. And, uh, I was, I guess I was fast right off the bat and he's like, you should probably look into this. Then what'd you do? Like ask dad, Hey, yeah, I was, I bothered him for, I think that was 2005. So. Yeah, 2007 I started racing. So two years, I bothered him, and my parents had no interest in going then, through the racing thing again oh, after so, just and, getting rid of my brother. And then two years after that, you were down south all in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how much did, like, because your brother's a pretty quiet guy, like you are. How much was he, like, involved in your racing and when you started and then throughout your career until today? Like, is he more involved now or – was he ever really involved? I'd say he's probably, he's more involved now because he can help me more now. He didn't race legend cars. He didn't race late models. Um, yeah. He was definitely helpful in the canine he's days. Turkey Derby champion? Modifies and late models. But, are... Bush North, <laughs> but Bush North was a totally different deal then. I mean, Bush North was yeah. like a, I mean, your dad came from it, right? Yeah. It was a real deal Bush racing. It was, yeah. I remember, I mean, it's a 
slight memories, but I remember going to the track and it was, yeah, it was, it was really cool back in the day. Yeah. And if you go back and watch you know, the old 56. What's it? C, C, C watch. C watch. Yep. C watch 56. And then like, dude, look, you've had, if you're, so obviously your career is. I do like that. Me and you are matching too. We are. They we're, we're, we're flanking Corey yeah. here. We planned it. Yeah. So you're from New Jersey. I'm trying to think of some sort of but a you're sandwich. But you're not. You're not really from. <laughs> Ice cream sandwich. Yes. You're from like. I'm from. 609. I'm you're from like, South Jersey. The good it part. It might as well be Kentucky. We got the the beach right it's there. We're also in the woods. Basically. Three Alabama. hours we can go to the Poconos, go snowboarding. You're you're a junkyard dog. I was seven so. three. I'm from actual That's New Jersey. That's lightly. I'm from like buddy. actual New Jersey. You're from like. You're from Northern the junkyard. Delaware. I'm, I'm from the nice part where we can go to the yeah, beach yeah, and go in the ocean. Yeah, let me tell you what my experience with him in, in Jersey. <laughs> I'm go, sure. I'm sure it was. We go to we go to Blue's Junkyard. Right, that's my <laughs> first go, right experience. Off the bat. Yeah, first, first place. First stop. <laughs> my mom lives on the same road as Blue's Junkyard, like two miles down the road. Yeah. So we whip it. We turn right. We've been in New Jersey for five minutes. <laughs> we turn out of the driveway, and there's just a bag of trash scattered on the road. I said yes. When I thought of New Jersey, this is exactly this, what I pictured. See, when people go, where just I'm trash from, scattered. They don't say that. They're like, man, I didn't know Jersey was this nice. I've oh, yeah. been down there. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> you know, I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. But no, like, so, yeah, growing up there, that's, the, I, I've always wondered that because you and your brother are like two of the guys that you could take an eight hour car ride with and then never ask each other when you need to go to the bathroom or anything. <laughs> so, like, I, that's what, I, I didn't know, like, how, how much advice he gives you. And, and then when he does, he's pretty dry. Yeah. Like, he'll walk up and be like, you suck, you know, or like, oh, you no, did good. He'll definitely tell me when I suck. That's yeah. For sure. Is there, is there a time you've been so pissed off at him for like giving you some, just straight critical no, feedback no he's just but he is very very honest but like it's a he, gift and a curse to have a family and race like that and like him right my dad's the same my dad's always been that way too and it's good because you know i know when i mess up and uh it's helped me definitely take ownership of of you know when i came in here and told you qualifying at martinsville i messed up yeah what was the 19 lacking probably the driver a little bit um you'll have that yeah you'll sometimes. have that and i get that you know, probably from, from everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we were talking a little bit before we jumped on the headsets about this was a great idea you had, and I actually might go to racing electronics and patent it. <laughs> um, there is, I was talking about how oh, I was, the true X button. Yes. The RT RTJ button. Um, how it is when you, when there's like a caution, like an ill-timed caution in a green flag sequence, or you're racing somebody and he's on your door chopping you tight or whatever, and you just want to let out some cuss words. It's not the same if you just say it because then nobody else hears it. Yep. It's just different when you press the button. But yep. then people think that you're a psychopath whenever you lose your mind <laughs> on the radio. We need like a separate button that you said to go to some random person in a motorhome or something. Yep. That way he hears just it. Closed channel. Just records it. So yeah. you can listen to it afterwards. It just goes yeah. to like one of those little recorders with but a tape on be, it. It's yeah. gotta be like encrypted. So nobody you have yeah. to have a password Only to you. listen to it. Yeah. Like you and like you and your therapist can talk through some <laughs> you gotta, yeah, you, you record it, and then at the end of the year they have, every driver has their own album. And yeah, you can sure buy you it go. and listen to this. That's not a bad Oh idea. my goodness. <laughs> but I've done it and then after the race I'm like, Man, I shouldn't have said that. But in the in when the, you in it the up, heat of the moment, yeah. yeah. It's you know, it's people it's no different than going on I racing. And somebody wrecks you, or yeah, you get into it with somebody. First thing someone does is key up and say whatever they say. Hey, man, it's like I mean, you see, like tr road rage is a serious problem in the, like anywhere, right? Yeah. There's just something about when you're driving a car that like pisses you off yes. way more than anything and, else. And then it's and just it's exaggerated. Tenfold. No it's doubt. tenfold when you do it for a living, and something bad goes your way. Like, and you're in there all by yourself. Nobody's with you. Nobody really sees what's going on. Yeah, they don't. They don't know. He all he says that a lot. It's a lonely place. It's, it's and lonely. you feel like every eyeball in the place is watching you when yep. they're not. So like when I'm when I'm there, <laughs> you know, like I'm. Well, I think everyone's eyeballs are on me at Martinsville when when Sam Mayer flipped me off. Did he flip no, you? I didn't I, see that. See, I was watching. See, this is the thing, right? This is what I tell myself when I'm in the car, thinking like everybody's watching. That when I'm like losing time or I'm going backwards, or, you know, this weekend we're 16. 17th, 18th, 19th, and Cobblish, and I started well, smashing you each other. You and Kyle were. Yeah, I'll get into that later in the show. <laughs> Two guys pissed off because they're trying to race to the back. That's did what you, we were doing. So did you key up at all and say? No, no. I didn't do key up. Do you think he did? I don't know. Oh, I haven't dude, heard radio I like to think active. of when you're talking about Sam Mayer flipping me off as him and Jimmy Johnson. Quit flipping me off, you little bitch. I wreck your 
Remember that? Remember Kyle Busch just let Jimmy Johnson really, That's a man. perfect example. Dude, yeah. He, he, who, was he, who was he even talking to? Yeah. He just, just, he was just letting it out. People on Reddit. But he, that's who he's selling to. He really needed somebody to hear it. And unfortunately, the whole world hurt. Right. This is a hell of a clip, though. He, uh, I appreciate God, a good a radioactive clip. Clip. But, like, yes, he doesn't have to say that. Now, I say stuff like that, but I just don't press the button. Yeah. We need a, that's what we need an RTJ <laughs> button for. Anymore. He doesn't press the button anymore. Yeah, oh, yeah. Learned. I used to say it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's well, a, that's good. You're growing. I am. I'm maturing. You're maturing. They call racing electronics, and you better call them when you get to your truck. <laughs> it doesn't be a race. Not, yeah. Hey, uh, let me get it, you, some buttons. I, I don't know that I cheer for anybody hard. Like, I won't, a lot of times I won't watch Xfinity race, Xfinity races, but because it's a Saturday and I just get busy with the kids. But when you're in it, like, I make a point to, like, oh, let's go pull for RTJ. I'll get out my Ryan Tricks Jr. You're not a junior. Do you get that a lot? Is that the most? You know I get that a lot. Is that the most? How like, how much does that bug you? It really doesn't, honestly. But are you just saying that? No, I can tell I just... it bugs you. <laughs> Let it out, man. This That's is okay. Just... This is a, you can just put it on us. We're here for you. <laughs> <laughs> press, press the button. The button. <laughs> press the button. Ah! <laughs> the button. <laughs> he just made the button press. <laughs> Damn, I wish this was on TV. I know that was uh, good. But but yeah, no, like I. <laughs> We make it a point. I don't think there's anybody that cheers for you harder than we do. Really, Maybe truly, Greg. man. I feel like it, like the people who have known like the ups and downs, the ins and outs. You've been so close. You've been out of it. Like you, I've been you, all around. You, been you, around co- town. you go into hibernation for like a year and a half. You come out with a main flowing like you are. Like, <laughs> yeah. well, the transformation, other, the other curse, transformation, the other curse like a butterfly. Name, right. The other, the, and that's what I was getting into before. The gift and the curse. Same, same thing. It's like because of who your brother is, or. You know, the, the older guys know who your dad was. You know, your dad had a good race career, too. And because of who his dad is, people just automatically think you get rides. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, yeah, Martin's little brother. So you don't even get the benefit I, of that on anything. I wish I wish I could just call a team owner and be like, hey, man, yeah. you know my last name, right? And they're just like, you're hired. Yeah, and people, but <laughs> that's people think tough. that's how it is. Like, people think that's how it is. Or like, well, yeah, he's Martin's brother. Martin's probably buying him that ride. Like, yeah. that's not yeah. even remotely close to how it is. And if your career ended tomorrow, you've had a really successful career as far as east stuff and and what you've been able to do but yeah it's just that chasing it and always wanting more and it's so interesting to hear you say like it just didn't like it hasn't timed out for you yet where i mean you look at joe logano right it wasn't going to time out for him yeah and one driver makes a mistake at penske and the door opens for him if not he's on the same path that you two are on yeah you know if if it's not one one phone call it's gotta be the right scenario so yeah Yeah, and it's you know, nobody but you remembers when you finished second, and nobody but you remembers all the races you could have won. A thousand percent. And, you know, all you can do is go back and look at stats, which can be not so great sometimes. Depressing. Depressing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's – I can think – I can remember every single race I've ran, and like I told you earlier, what I've – you know, how close I've been or what, what needed to be different. You know, this caution came out. Well, nobody saw that. Nobody saw us running third, yeah. about to take the lead. If it stayed green, they just saw, oh, we finished 15th. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of that. And, uh, yeah. I hope you win Dover. I'm going to bring Harper up there on the Xfinity plane. So, if you win, we're going to come pick, take a picture and pick your lane. Man, okay. that would be cool. That would be awesome. We wish you luck. Where are you? And I hope you win, win Talladega, too, yeah, and Darlington. Win Talladega. All I'll just win, yeah, all three. Just all three. Why not? You can. Three more races than 19 for Ryan Truex. We wish you luck, but before you go, we've got three questions we ask every guest in here and you're no exception okay number one if you had to pick one car and one track to race at the rest of your life what do you go with one car as in like a series or like anything yeah, just one type Any of race car, car you want and one track yeah it could be a R- rental Toyota tundra if you don't one car own race track the rest of your life yeah huh man that's a tough one um that's why i asked him probably uh Let's say like a, let's say like a Senna's F1 car from, mm. I don't know, his last championship. Okay. Marlboro car. The Marlboro car. At, uh, let's say uh, the Nürburgring. Big track. Full track. I mean, so I'll that's be, a first. You tell his friends with Sam Hunt. It'll take me probably, Big F1 guy. you know, four hours to make a lap. <laughs> so I'll, I'll spend a lot of time perfecting the track. It's well, like when you get on iRacing and you just it takes you like an hour to make a lap and something. And then he you, did, have, you, he done, did have it. you done it there? 
No. It, dude, it's impossible. It is impossible. You, you did it. He came over my Chicago house. Chicago street course. Street, Chicago street course. That, that one's tough, too. Thing, and I he's raced like, it for an hour and a half. It didn't make a lap. <laughs> he's like, I'm Every so time done with this. Up straight in the I, <laughs> Dude, I had the first three corners down pat because I ran them 400 times. I never made the last three corners of the track. Uh, mm. Question number two. What's the most embarrassed you've been at the racetrack? Uh, embarrassed at the racetrack. Um, in, uh, 2012, I guess it was, was it trackside? Did they still have it then? Like trackside, trackside live? live yeah. yeah. Um, I had to do a wing eating contest with, uh, I think it was Rutledge live on you TV. Lost that. He looks like a man that could eat some wings. I almost threw up <laughs> <laughs> on TV. Hot wings are just like normal wings. Uh, they were, oh. They were kind of hot, but they were definitely like six or seven hours old. They were, oh. they were cold, and they were just outside. Gross. And, uh, yeah, it was just really embarrassing because I almost threw up on TV. Like, I definitely gagged. How many did you, did you win? Oh, no. So you lost What do you think? I, don't, I mean, if you're committed enough to where you're going to puke, no, I, I hope you at least give him a run for his money. <laughs> no. No, like, I was just, I don't know if it was the nerves or what, but it was really embarrassing. Oh, Probably E. coli. I don't know. It probably <laughs> it was. Yeah. It could be. <laughs> I think it was the week e. after Dover too. Oh, probably be yeah. a lot of things. Um, question number three: If you had to okay. lose or forget all your racing memories except one, what do you keep? Honestly, it's not even my memory or my racing memory. Um, but probably when Martin won the championship, that was being able to go. First of all, standing on pit road behind the box, watching the last 10 laps, watching Kyle reel him in. I was like, after this year and everything, he's going to lose it to Kyle on the last lap. And uh, he won it. And then we all ran out on the pit wall. And, um, you know, he drove by and we all got high fives. Then he did donuts. And then we all ran out there. It was just a cloud of smoke. Um, that was probably the coolest for sure. That's one that, you know, if I could cancel all of them, that's one I would – definitely keep. that's pretty cool man to be able to share that with family yeah the whole family was there cousins um uncles aunts my sister her kids like it was it was a big deal well awesome. hope, hopefully all that family can celebrate a dub for you my friend thank you for joining us that's right here in the studio thank you guys good luck this weekend good luck this weekend three yeah. races. glad i could finally get the call flying the jersey flag high that's right making us proud even though you're from south jersey <laughs> the good part <laughs> Sean? Sean? Good, bad. South Jersey? Same. X and 98. Let's go, baby. <laughs> That's it. Enough of New Jersey. Let's move on with the show. <laughs>